Hi guys, welcome to another demonstration video. Today I'm going to be having a bit of a look at basic texture and some of the techniques that I utilise in the videos around the site. It was pointed out to me in the, the Portrait Master series that it is a bit hard to see in the camera so I will definitely try to endeavour to give you a bit of a clearer look. You can see here I've done two basic little gradients just representing what you would see in most of say, my portraits. This may be being the edge of the nose and a bit of a shadow gradiating outwards from it. I'm going to show you two different techniques. The techniques themselves are the stippling method and what I call the spaghetti method. Now maybe not the best name for it but that's the best way that I describe it because that is the style of stroke that I actually do and stippling I'm sure is, is quite common I would think in the airbrushing world where it's just a little bit of a dotting action but it's how you do that dotting action that's very important because we don't want a spread of uniform dots going across it because it won't quite look right. I will try to exaggerate the contrast a little bit so it may not be exactly what you see in the videos I need to do that obviously so the camera can see what I'm trying to achieve I've got a dark grey area, a bit of a lighter grey area and a white area and I'll show you the different methods that you can use on each colour to actually start introducing a little bit of texture to it later on I'm also going to do a little bit of a demonstration it's, it's obviously you can see up there demonstration skull it's going to be a bit of a realistic skull but it's going to be very quickly painted very messily painted and it's just a practice piece to actually give you the idea behind what's going on here and something that you might want to practice yourself if you want to have a good shot at texture and, and try some of the different techniques involved again I will over exaggerate everything and I do apologize if there's a bit of a buzzing in the background if it isn't crows or dogs barking or rain or something like that there's always something going on in the background here and today it's fly so you might hear a bit of a buzz 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 I'm also using a new compressor today it's my little silent compressor although it's not very silent um, I will try to endeavor to talk and then paint so the compressor isn't cutting in over the airbrushing um, and my talking all the time so I'll see how I go with that but sorry if it does pop in every now and then I will try to edit and stop the video and stop actually painting so you can actually see exactly what's going on without too much noise in the background especially when I'm explaining stuff the stippling method I can best describe it as a sewing machine action so what we want to be doing is we want to be ducking in and out to the canvas we want to be changing our distance constantly and also what we want to do is just be creating dots so we want to be pulsing the actual trigger it's a little bit of a hard action to actually master but all we're going to be doing I'll do it on a little bit of a 45 degree angle we're just going to be pulsing in and out like that going different distances and if you just time your pulsing right just a bit of a sequence pulse you'll find that it'll just hit at a different spot every time so you're not always going to be constantly getting the same size dots the one thing we want to be careful of is same size dots because it'll give a uniform look to it and that's exactly what we're not after you'll find on the darker colors what you need to do is come back in with a light gray so I'm going to work this area a little bit but I'm not going to go right up into the dark areas because it's a bit of a waste of time I don't want too much contrast showing through my really heavier shadows so I'm just going to work up in this area a little bit and I'm actually going to start stippling a little bit of this light grey back into this dark grey right, again I can't give you an exact distance because it is a varying distance you can see where it's just started to come out there before that's actually more like a spaghetti stroke because again the trigger stuck on so I'll go back to hopefully a similar action to what I was trying to achieve. You can see that should show up in the camera quite clearly now that I'm starting to get quite a fair bit of a, a circular type look action going on in there. I'll just lower the brightness hopefully so you can see it a little bit clearer. There we go. You can see how there's a bit of a un uniform size to them. So what I want to do is as I blend in to this grey area, this light grey area, I actually want to just decrease the focus a little bit. I do that just by doing the same stroke a little bit further out. 
slight technical malfunction there. Hopefully the gun will decide to run a bit nicer for me. It's really starting to irritate me. You can probably see they're coming a little bit closer. Again, the gun's still really having fun with me today, so I'll just keep persevering on. Again, it's, it doesn't really matter what the gun does when it comes to these kind of methods because any little blast of paint and things like that can actually be uh, incorporated into the texture itself. Alright, you can see basically how I've got lots of little dots and little features kind of going on there. Alright, it started blending into this light grey a little bit. You won't see a lot of contrast, obviously, in the white unless you just p pasted a little bit of that light grey over it. So what I want to look at now is actually what you need to do to make this contrast stand out a little bit less. Because one thing you don't want to do is go over this with a, a really dark colour because you'll have a lot too much texture coming through. So generally what you'll see in a lot of videos is what I call fogging. And fogging is basically just going over your texture itself just to soften the texture back down. You can see there what I also did is added a little bit of light grey here and then just actually textured back into this area here from quite a fair bit of a distance. You can barely probably pick it up in the camera itself but in real life that's given it a really nice blend from a really dark area to a really bright highlight. Well, that's all I really need to do with the light grey. You'll notice that I allowed a fair bit of that light grey also, just to lightly overspray on that dark grey. Because I'm coming back in with blacks, anything that you overspray in this kind of area isn't really a problem. What it actually does do is when you start breaking this area up with a darker, darker colour, you'll find that it actually creates that little bit of nice lightness coming through. And when we add transparent black over it, it starts blending all of those colours together. So you can see what I've done with the light grey. I've just started working into that dark grey a little bit. I've also worked back this way, changing and varying the distance with a crappy gun at the moment, but trying to pulse in and out with my airbrush so it's creating a lot of different dots. Alright, I've got a slightly darker grey out now. I've just added a little bit more black to this lighter grey that I was using earlier. And what I want to do is I want to start working into this darker shadow area. You'll find that because I'm working a little bit closer to what I was earlier with those really lighter base layers, you'll find that the actual paint will stand out a fair bit more, even though it's very similar tone to probably what I've already got there. I'm going to use the same in and out type action with pulsing the, the actual airbrush and trying to create dots as I'm actually moving. You can see here I didn't feel the need to actually shade that off because what I'm going to do now is when I actually fog it I'm going to shade it off so it shades off a little bit of that lighter grey as well and starts blending these two separate elements in together a little bit.
Now you can see I didn't actually put a lot of overspray on there, besides that big bit of stuff that came out, which is probably what's been bugging around with my gun. Alright, but you can see just that light little bit of overspray has helped blend all those separate elements together. Now if you want to do, what you've seen here is a lot more out of focus to what you'd normally do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just concentrate on this edge here. Right, I'm going to put a little bit closer stippling in so you can actually see how you can create an effect that has an out of focus effect and also an effect that's in focus. Hopefully the camera picks up there all these tiny little dots that are done a lot closer to the canvas but in the same kind of stippling movement. If you're doing something that is a little bit closer to the camera, say a nose or the pores of a nose, this is the type of method that you want to use. We could then go back in with a, a lighter grey colour and start breaking that up a little bit and then shade it back down with our black. But always remember just to fog it down a little bit just to soften the hardness of the actual texturing itself. So what I'm going to do is with the same colour is I'm just going to again try to blast a little bit of paint across this direction here as if this is my shadow and I'm actually going to now make this edge a little bit darker. And a bit more stippling. You can see now hopefully how that's starting to give it a little bit of a in focus and an out of focus look to the actual stippling. It's a bit of a natural looking skin tone as well and this can be also done with any colour. It doesn't really matter what your base colours are. If you're actually doing a colour picture you want to start your base layers off nice and light and then go into a darker base layer and then go into an even darker base layer again and then come back in with your, your transparents, your transparent skin tones and blend it in. Today I'm going to blend it in with black. Well, I've got my black out now and I'm going to pretty much do the same process to what I did earlier. I'm going to lay down a little bit of a base layer hopefully just to start blending some of these elements together right, and then I'm going to just start actually doing a stippling action in from the shadow and then start working my way out. As I work my way out I'm just going to start bringing the gun away but in the same action. One thing I generally try to do is go around nice features and nice areas so you're not blocking out the whole lot and what this does is actually bring some of that earlier texture forward. Again as I go into the shadow I'm going to go a little bit closer and to show you the detail that you can actually bring out in the actual shadow texture as well if you don't take it to too dark a value to begin with. So you should be able to see in this little bit of a small area here, we're starting to get a little bit of a skin tone effect. I am going to just blend off a little bit of this light grey with just a little bit of a, a dark overspray over the whole lot. Right, 
and you can see what that's done is it's just knocked the highlights it hasn't actually removed any of the texture it's just made the texture not stand out too much which is quite important because we we don't want the texture really standing out through our base layers or sorry through our transparent layers later what we want to do is we just want to actually knock it down a little bit with that a little bit of fogging that I was talking about earlier and because of the fogging when you actually put the black over it all it does is it just changes the tones of a few of those greys into different coloured greys that's why I don't feel there's a need to paint with a lot of different types of grey two or three normally is sufficient in my eyes but what I'll do also now is I'll come back in and start cutting back in with white from this actual highlight area I've now got a pure white back in and no matter how hard I try I can pretty much guarantee you there is no chance that you'll actually see the contrast change between that light overspray that we did earlier with the light greys and the blacks with the white going over it it might show up on the camera itself but just due to the glare and that itself you may not see what's really going on until I start actually blending the white back into this light grey black oversprayed area I'll do the exactly same kind of method inside outside pulsing I'll try to put some closer ones in to hopefully show up on the camera but again you might not see a lot of the work that I'm doing in this area Right, so that's that done. Again, it's only a very, very small amount of the light greys actually showing through this highlighted area. This would be, say, a cheek area maybe. And what we want to do is we want to bring this colour down to actually suit the contrast now. So what I'm going to do is actually start working the white in this way. Exactly, exactly what we did with the black, that direction. Hopefully that showed up in the camera. Again, I can near guarantee that it's a very, very hard thing to see. I'm hopefully going to turn this part of the segment into a digital segment so you can actually see it. But if you actually see what is going on there in the camera, and I will try to zoom in a little bit closer in a second, all it's done is broken up that light grey, and it's actually because the white is sprayed from a little bit of a distance, all it really does is tint the grey. So it's not actually turning it white as such, it's just turning another shade of grey yet again. You could break into this area a little bit as well if you needed to. If you think that you've gone too dark, this is where the white's quite handy. We can go in and around that black a little bit. Don't overlay it over the black, but overlay it over this grey area and soften that down. But one thing we do want to do here is exactly what we did over here, and that is just soften it down with a little bit of fogging. That's pretty much what I wanted to demonstrate for the actual stippling method. I'll try to zoom in a little bit just to hopefully show you the full effect that that's achieved. Silly camera. Quite hard to see on the actual picture in front of you there. But I'm sure if you actually look pretty close you'll, you'll see that there's just a little bit of a graduation change through that area. The texture itself is only making a subtle effect into it, which is exactly what I'm trying to demonstrate. If, if you need to actually do, say, a beard or moustache, obviously you're going to be doing a lot more individual dots in there. There may be pores even showing up. I could go back over this area here now with white, and then darken it down a little bit again with a darker grey, and then work back over it again with black. You can go back and forth between these kind of shades and these segments a million times, and it still won't actually bugger up your picture. All it does is it builds up a bit of fuzziness to the picture. So you want to be able to try to achieve these effects as quickly and as minimal, minimalistic as you can. 
if you start putting too much paint on it, as I said, it will start getting a little bit furry. Clear coat will certainly fix that, but it starts getting a little bit of a a value to it that is a bit hard to describe, but it does look like little hairs are literally growing off the actual canvas. All right, so try to keep it short, try to keep it sweet. All you've got to remember is over the lighter colours, you want to start introducing the darker colours in and the lighter colours in. And over the darker areas, you can introduce a little bit of this lighter grey into it, all right, and then introduce your black back over it. And same thing over here, you can introduce a little bit of light grey into your white, and then introduce your white back over the top of it. And you'll always have a natural skin tone going out from your shadow. The stippling method is a fantastic method, but generally when I do any texture, I'll always use a combination of both methods, the stippling method and the spaghetti method. I'd better step over now to the other method, just to show you the difference. But I certainly won't concentrate on it too much because you'll find with the spaghetti method it's exactly the same as what you're doing over here except for instead of pulsing the gun, creating dots, you're holding the gun and moving it around creating a continuous line. All right, I've got a little bit of white in here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work this area over here. And I'm going to really exaggerate it. I'll zoom in a bit on the camera so you can see hopefully what's just been achieved there. Again, very hard to see because of the the contrast of the white compared to that light grey. But in real life I can see all these lines just going around. What I'll do is I'll start mixing a little bit of my darker grey again so I can actually start doing this area so you might be able to see it a little bit clearer. I've made up a similar tone to this darker, darker grey. Again, I'm just doing this on the fly, so I'm just adding a little bit of black paint here and there and adding a bit of white paint back to it and things like that. So the only time I really need pure colours is when I'm using the, the pure blacks or the pure whites. All these greys, it doesn't really matter exactly what colour you make it. As long as you, you make it like double the, the actual strength of the last one, you'll get a good effect. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to break this area up with the spaghetti stroke. It's going to be a continuous line that I just keep moving around. Again, the only difference is I don't pulse the gun. Same thing, I went a fair bit closer this time. As I go into the actual lighter grey area, I'm going to pull away a little bit with my airbrush. Alternatively, as I go closer, I can go a little bit closer with my airbrush. You find even though I'm using the same colour, that in itself has given you three shades of grey. Just the distance and the intensity of the paint itself has given you a light grey, a dark grey and a bit of a lighter unfocused grey. What I want to do now is I want to bring a little bit of this light grey back in, but first, exactly what we did over here, I'm just going to fog it back a little bit. See there, I even just done a little bit of overspray on that white area itself. So now what I want to do, I'll concentrate on this dark end again first. We'll get some black into the gun. Right now I've got a little bit of white out. I'm just going to cut back into this light grey a little bit. I'm not sure if it, I hit record before, but I actually introduced a little bit of light grey also back into it. The exact same grey that I was using for a lot of this area here, I just kind of cut across and went a little bit silly with the gun just to break up a little of this white itself. I'm going to now cut back in with white into this little light grey area. I'll start off nice and tight and then I'll just come out with the gun a little bit just so it softens it off and then I might just show what the contrast looks like when you actually do it next to a darker area.
All right, so that's a little bit of a soft focus white going back in. If you needed to really pick out some pores, what you want to do is go a little bit closer with the exact same action. Right, so you can see just playing around with actually putting a little bit of white over the grey, a little bit of black over the white, a little bit of light grey in here, a little bit of different colours. You can start getting some really different effects going. I'm already starting to see a little bit of a beard kind of effect coming through here, maybe the side of the cheek, very similar to probably what we did in the Humphrey Bogart portrait itself. This is overkill. You'll find that you want to fog it back a fair bit in between a lot of the layers. I just wanted to try to at least let the camera pick up the actual effect of all the different movement that you do with the gun just in a continuous flow of paint to see how cre creative and actually how textural it can be. I'm now just going to fog back a little bit of this area, a little bit of this darker grey that went over my white earlier just to help soften that into the white itself and I might just create a little bit of a border around here, just a little bit of stippling with the white from a bit of a distance. I'm sure you can see how the build up of so many different layers on an actual picture starts hiding these grey lead lines. I'm quite happy for the grey lead lines still to show through on these and even on the demonstration video you'll see a lot of grey lead left in the picture. It's more just for demonstration so you know kind of roughly the boundaries that I'm working into. I suggest you, you try to go back and have a bit of a, a draw up on the board of a couple of those types of squares. So there's the two different effects together. You can see, ultimately, they end up looking very, very, very similar. Even though I've attacked both slightly with different colours, the black maybe not quite as dark in this one, but you can see how the actual two effects can start creating a very similar look. By actually blending the two of them together, you start getting a really natural skin tone, three-dimensional, more photorealism type style portrait in my opinion. You can go overboard with it and it can really stand out and look a bit dodgy as well. So just be wary of your, your texture. If you feel that you are going a little bit heavy with it, just fog back a little bit more in between your layers of texture and you'll find that the earlier layers, layers like maybe the stippling method here, maybe because there's more overspray going on around the place compared to this tighter action, you'll find that what it does is just creates those little different types of effects going on. And whichever one may suit you, both may suit you, one might suit you more than the other and there might be another 20 different other methods that might suit. But just remember you can always now start cutting back into all these skin tones with actual other texture. So if you feel that you haven't quite got enough detail into it, hit the painting again with your light greys and your whites. Start outlining all your blacks in later and blending all those separate elements together and you can just keep building up pictures into real realistic style you know, portraits. That's what I encourage, that you just try these two little squares, you try combinations, you put white next to the black, you put the grey over here, play around with it, keep moving your, your actual uh, your wrist, because most of the actual movements come from the wrist itself, stippling movements a bit more hammer stroke, and the spaghetti movements just a little bit more of a, a wrist action. That's how I do it anyway, again it may not suit everybody, but hopefully just the two little demonstration boxes there has shown how the basic principle of it works and how the idea of it works. I'm going to do a demonstration skull now. I'm going to utilise the exact same principles, although you may see me jump around a little bit. I will be painting the skull with a fair bit of speed. I'll just zoom down on the camera a little bit, hopefully, so you can see what I'm painting. I'm not going to zoom in on the camera too much there because I do want you to see that what I'm actually doing is floating the painting from a fair bit of a distance. The only time I'm really going to go close with this light grey is around the eyes and start defining some of the main shapes, maybe even around the teeth, start building some of the black shapes of the actual picture itself, right, because I can afford to do that 
I'm always going to cover it later with a little bit darker color and it helps get all my reference points in case we go a little bit heavy with our texture and we start losing our reference points which as you can imagine when you have a look up the top uh, well when I demonstrated what I did up the top earlier on you can actually lose your blacks quite easily and then have to re-establish them so again I'm just going to follow some of my guidelines here and start putting in the darker colors later on I'm going to put in a bit of a, a darker background so I'm not really going to care if I float over spray all over the place I'm not going to describe every single stroke in this demonstration obviously, especially for this part. It's exactly what I do in nearly any portrait that I tackle. So I'm just looking at the skull in exactly the same fashion as I do any portrait, filling in some of my darker areas, some of my light areas, and leaving my highlights alone so I can actually just put them back in with whites and that later. Don't go too dark too early and you'll find most of the time you won't have any drums. I will outline a few things now. Again, not that it's needed done if you're going to turn your nose pure black. I certainly don't recommend pure black uh, base coats at any any given time. Always try to break it up with a little bit of texture so you can actually see that there's some detail going on in the shadow itself. Anything that you make pure black is very hard to put texture back into to give it a, a look and a feel that blends in with the rest of the painting. See what I'm doing with those eyes, I'm just pretty much creating exactly the same effect to what we did earlier on up in the boxes themselves. I've just started creating a bit of a dark edge, exactly like what I did with cutting in before. Now I can actually stipple into the, that dark edge a little bit, just to break it up. I do it a little bit earlier on, even though we're going to put black over it and a lot of this detail will be lost, I think it's a good idea to put it in uh, pretty early layers if you can. But the reason why it's good to put in some of the early layers is because if you do bugger it up, you can always cover it up. Right, so there's my eyes done. You can see it's quite a dark grey value there on the actual camera. It's not quite as dark in real life. But I did want to start off with a little bit of a darker grey because if you can control your intensity you get 
all the different shades of grey that you really need and it just I find it's a little bit more minimalistic when you actually uh, do the painting you don't get too much paint build up and you can start controlling things from a very early early stage now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do in and around the teeth area itself starting with the, the darkest area and filling in also this area around here and a few little lines that are going on there zoom that in a little bit if I can just so you can see it a bit more clearly you see I'm just pretty much drawing lines in there and filling in between the teeth I'm not really worried about neatness neatness can come later all we're really doing is defining shadows we can always put white texture back in to start cutting some of these edges out if you lose them so don't worry too much about where your spray goes or over spray or yada 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 just paint the picture Hopefully you can see there that I haven't quite gone to the full contrast of that colour or the full darkness of the colour because if I do, and I do want to put a bit of texture in as I'm going to in a minute just up around this line, you'll actually not be able to tell the difference between the two too much. because it was a dark area I did fog back over it quite intensely because it's now just starting to poke through again maybe hard to pick up in the camera but in real life it gives me a little bit of area to work with the light grey and it gives me a reference of something going on in that shadow itself I'm going to just softly bring some of these kind of shaded elements in again doing it from a bit of a similar distance to what I did this light grey through this area probably from around about six or seven centimeters probably see that I'm not really staining my lines lines are just the guide you want these lines still to be poking through a little bit so you know exactly what you're texturing later how far you want to texture into all these shadows if you actually spray the shadow over the line it doesn't matter at all as I'll just do a little bit of outlining on this other side
Or you can maybe see there if I zoom in a little bit more. Just over there in this little corner that I was working on, I started introducing some little stippling type action going on there and starting to really define some shadow work going out here and I'm going to follow in my lines there just to start introducing these shadows and some of the texture into the shadow quite early. We could just block it in first and then go over it with a bit of texture. But also because it's disappearing off and away, I'm going to pull out a little bit as I go up and around the cheek because I want this to be less focused than this area here. The same thing happens pretty much all through this painting. If I'm doing something that's close to the camera, like through this stage here, you'll find that you're going to be a lot closer with your stippling or spaghetti stroke and as you're moving away from the camera, you want to be coming away with the actual airbrush. A little bit more just general shading. Right, whilst I'm here I might just do a little bit of work around these teeth and get them knocked in pretty quick. There's a bit of a black area going through here and all these teeth basically got to join up. Certainly nothing to do really with the texturing methods. You can see there that, or well hopefully you can see there, that I'm actually not really being that careful. It really doesn't matter at this stage. All we're doing is defining the basic shapes. Because we're going in with lighter colours later, and you'll see quite often in my paintings I fog over the whole lot, that's because I want the contrast in the next layer being able to come through and start to redefine some of the actual features. If you want to cut them in later to get them really defined, that's up to you. I personally don't do it a lot only because you can spend hours upon hours on the painting as it is anyway. So there I was just introducing a bit of a stippling action maybe mix with a little bit of a spaghetti action because what these teeth have to do they have to start coming up the actual jawline there So we've got the the basis there going on for basically what we're looking at for the skull. I just want to define some of these major lines in before we go too far. So I'm just going to zoom out on the camera a little bit so you can actually see those lines going in. You can probably see I'm being really messy with my lines. That's because there's no real need for neatness in what I'm doing here. 
you could slow yourself down, obviously, but pulsing lines, all that kind of stuff, it really doesn't worry me because I can blend all these aspects into other aspects. I know that I'm going to put a bit of a darker background in, so if I go too dark with my line, it's not a problem, I'll just blend it in. Same underneath here, there's a fair bit of shadow going on, and obviously there's also a fair bit of shadow going up into the jaw lines and things like that themselves, so you can break up these lines very easily, just with a little bit of this stippling style action going on. I'll start putting the rest of the actual shading work in if I can. Ah, oh, the gun's really, really annoying me today. And because I've got all my guidelines on with all this light shading, I should be able to knock that in pretty quick, hopefully. So I'm starting to get the basic idea of where my different shadows and things like that in the picture are going on. I said don't be too fussy with it at the moment because later on we can start cutting in a lot more darks into it, which I will do. I'll do a little bit more work obviously in the, the forehead there and a little bit around the teeth and a little bit around the bottom jaw. But this is basically all we really need to do for the first layer. And hopefully you can also see it's a very slow build up. Even though I'm working with quite a dark colour, you can control it quite well from its light shades to its darker shades. I'm doing that just to skip a little bit of the base layer quite honestly. But I really want to get into texturing so I'm going to go a little bit darker than probably what I normally would. But hopefully you'll see still a lot of the original highlights of the whites coming through where they need to come through, especially around this front jawline, around the teeth themselves, and a little bit down the bottom here where the, the light's obviously picking up. Round the back here, I can be a little bit messy with it. I will start introducing a little bit of distance stippling, 
but I'll wait till I've actually got all my basic shadow work in first so I know where I can stipple and where I don't want to stipple. Well, you can probably see just in that last little section here, I just stippled down from the teeth a little bit there. It's just to start introducing some of that major shadow going on underneath the teeth themselves. One of the things I really love about this method is you can be really messy with the painting early on. It feels quite honestly a little bit more artistic than having to try to replicate every single dot and thing that you see in a picture. I like just kind of going with the flow of it a little bit and just trying to work within my guidelines but if I go out of them I don't really quite honestly care so I don't put any pressure on myself and mistakes don't really bother me then. like that, trigger stuck on, same thing that's been happening all the day with the gun and a little bit of a line gets introduced alright so what do we do, we stipple it away oh, no more mistake Let's do it again. That time I just let it stay on. 
just filled it in with a little bit of a random action. If you know your gun's doing something in particular that's annoying you, as long as you know about it, you can normally avoid most issues. Like, my gun is sticking on a fair bit, but you can see I'm still kind of painting away with it, mainly because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered changing the guns, especially for these early lays, because as I was trying to say before, nothing really matters. Anything can be fixed later on. Might have to stop and clean the gun, I think, soon. But we'll get a little bit more done. Again, it's only early layers, so anything that does look a bit heavy or bothers me a little bit later, I'll show you, show you exactly how I'd go about fixing it. Gun. Yeah, they frustrate me too. Alright, a little bit more on the back of the skull there behind the, the crack in the head. You can see that obviously needs to be caught up a little bit to the main skull. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to put in a very early layer of actual texture. And I'm mainly going to use the stiffling method pretty much all over the painting, just to soften aspects down. And I'm going to go a little bit closer where I think there might need to be a little bit more detail. Start pulling out a few little features and a few of the little darker shadows as per my reference. So I might just give that all a little bit of a hit and hopefully you might be able to see me kind of pulsing in and out with my gun and maybe later, maybe even incorporating a little bit of the spaghetti method in nice and early to in and around the teeth areas and, and some of these shadows that can be really dark later so it doesn't matter if we stuff something up. I'll just zoom in there, hopefully so you can see this action getting done a little bit closer. Because I will be jumping all over the painting now, because what I want to do is soften it all down to a reasonably dark tone, so I, I can then start introducing a lot more light grey and white back into it. So again, don't be afraid too much of you overspraying that. Not exactly the layering method that we used above, not exactly the layering method that I used in the Portrait Master system. You'll find that every time I do something like this, I might do it slightly differently myself. There's, as I said, a million different ways to do it, so experiment with it a little bit and come up with your own style of stippling and spaghetti. I quite honestly relate this to a, a lot of drawings that I used to do in the past where you made up the whole drawing by dots. I used to like doing those drawings but they used to be very time consuming.
I'm hoping you're seeing how the effects actually coming up just in this first layer, even though I'm overemphasizing everything and actually seeing uh, the possibilities of this actual texturing style. I'm not going to go overboard there because there is a lot of light to introduce back into that but that gives me the basic idea of what I want to follow later on I can still see my actual lines poking through again there's going to be a lot of white added a lot of light grey added back into this so anything that you think that you've gone a little bit overboard you haven't what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken this area around here but again I'm going to do it with a stippling spaghetti stroke action this area here in the picture is actually lighter. I'm going to leave that right to the end then just float some colour in it. Again, if you're worried about any of this texture, just fog it back a bit. You see, fogging it back starts hiding it a little bit. Again, there you can see I was just I left a little bit of light, but then I started cutting back into it. a little bit of work down the bottom and then I'll be finished pretty much what I would consider the base layer for this nearly now because it's white, quite a white area down here I've just pulled my airbrush back and I'm just more over spraying it than actually stippling Again, as I get close to a dark edge, if I want to hide it a little bit, hide the outline aspect of it, I can just dipple up to it. And I'm just going to pull back a little bit on the camera there because I want to do something else just quickly for this background and that was start introducing some of the idea of a background I'm not going to go too crazy with a lot of this aspect just yet as I said I want to introduce a lot of light and then I'm going to start introducing my darks again but I've created a little bit of a texture a wood texture type effect underneath the actual skull itself. I'll show you how to just form a basic one in black and white. I'm going to do it all by hand, so if I go out of my boundaries a little bit, I'm not too stressed about it. If I go into the skull, I'm not too stressed about it. It can all be covered up.
You can try not to be too neat with it. You've got to remember we're just laying out the basic idea of it. We can refine, define, change. We can keep doing all that as if we're working with opaque paints. Obviously if we want to do a painting out of translucence it's not quite as possible. But for this kind of stuff we're just going to throw something in. We're going to make it look half, half sexy hopefully again just to give you a bit of the idea of the process. I'm just going to start putting some knots in here. They're just lines. They're drawn quickly and at the end of a line I might just loop around. And that's all I really want to do. Again, we're just giving a bit of an idea of the actual I the the grain of the wood itself. We don't have to go too heavy to begin with. Once we start creating a little bit of layer with uh, some of our light greys and that, we'll also obviously put a little bit of that in work into uh, down the bottom here. Again, you can see I'm not going too crazy. Just introducing the idea of it. A little bit of shadow work. Obviously, where the shadow is, I don't want to lose it by putting too many lines over it. So I, I actually use the shadow itself just to start defining some of the the darker wood aspects. Well, that's pretty much all I want to do for that early woodwork. I do want to just soften the, the whole background down. What I'm going to do is a little bit of a gradation, just so you can see how maybe I do a bit of a gradation through similar techniques to what the stippling method actually is. I'm just going to increase my distance massively and come out about 10 to 15 centimeters away from the canvas. And then I'm just going to float a little bit of color. Start light and then build back down with your dark. Right, just to throw something a bit more interesting in the background, I'm just going to throw some strokes across just maybe to indicate some kind of wallpaper or something like that behind it maybe. Right, now I've got the lightness of the sheet, now I can start work my dark back down into it. Exactly the same method, just a little bit more pull back on your uh, ink supply.
Well, hopefully you can see there that putting those diagonals in first and then actually just building my spots up until I start blending into them uh, is basically the way that I'm getting this gradient working for me at the moment. Alrighty, so that's basically the first part of the skull that I wanted to to show you. So I'll just line it up the brightness a little bit so you can see what it actually looks like in real life. That's about the tone that I've got in front of me in the canvas. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can also see it from a little bit of a distance. You can see we've been very messy with it. I certainly haven't taken too much care, that's for sure. You see me just blast some paint everywhere. That's exactly the idea that I want you just to kind of get into the idea of practicing for some of the, the demonstrator techniques above. The more you practice this stippling method, the earlier you find that you'll be able to utilize it in your paintings. If you're a little bit worried about uh, utilizing it as early as what I am, lay down some base layers first, get the portrait looking right first, and as per the portrait series, then you start introducing your texture. I really wanted to do it against a really heavy contrast, especially on the white, so you can really see how the actual process works. Now, I'm not worried about this because I know when I go back over it with my lights, I can cut this shade down to any color I want. No blue shift. If I put black on it, blue shift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid the black until the last layer where I just want to blend all the separate elements in together, maybe concentrate some shadow areas, right? but most of it is going to be in these three or four grey tones that you see and white. Hi guys, welcome back. I've got a little bit of a light grey going in my gun at the moment. It's just a bit of an off-white, similar to what I did in the first layer of the Humphrey Bogart portrait. It's the same kind of colour, and what I want to do is I want to start working back into these darker areas a little bit. And I also want to start working a little bit of the grey, just off the gradation aspect of some of these darker lines, and start blending into where some of my really bright highlights are later. I won't go right into the highlight, but I will let a little bit of my overspray go into the area just to allow for a little bit of contrasting when I put white back in later. I'll start off in an area hopefully that you can see the effect. I'm going to use quite a large stippling effect, effect around here. I'm also, as I go closer to the camera, I'm going to go a lot closer with my stippling or spaghetti stroke. Same thing through this section, you'll find that a lot of this will be nice tight kind of work where as we go away from the camera it's going to soften the focus a little bit so I'm going to do it from a little bit further away.
Hopefully you can see in that shadow what the effect's actually doing. I'll zoom in a little bit on the camera here. As soon as I find the button. I was working this area here and you can see it's just slightly changing a little bit of the contrast back to a little bit of a lighter shade. I could probably add a little bit more white to this light grey but it's going to give it a little bit more variation in the end so I'm quite happy to keep working with it. Again, don't cover up all your white and make sure when you do get into these dark areas that you really randomise it and let a little bit of that darkness still come through. I'll see if I can adjust the brightness there so you might be able to see it going in a bit. A bit better. You should be able to see there in the nose, I'm even putting some in the nose itself. You've got to remember that layer that we did before was nothing but guide. The actual painting is starting to be developed from this layer forth. All this work that we did earlier on with the slightly darker grey, a lot of it will actually end up getting covered up and we reintroduce it a little bit later when we start working out our greys or darker grey charcoal back in and a little bit of black back in. After this light grey I'll, I'll work a little bit of white in so I don't lose my highlights in that regard. So I'm always going to have a highlight and I'm always going to have a, a dark area so I kind of know what I need to do in between. Just remember one thing, I am overemphasizing this a lot. You probably might want to not go to quite the detail I am here with my stippling and my spaghetti stroke. But if you do, you can always fog it back a little bit. But I really want to do it so you can actually see the process on the camera. I won't fog back a lot in between my layers, just hopefully to blend them a little bit so it looks nice. But realistically, what I'm trying to just show you is how you lay the spots uh, in and around each other how to identify your highlight areas and, and maintain them and keep them and how to identify and keep your dark areas so when we actually do go back in with the black later we can blend all the separate elements together if I can. You can see in the picture there it is obviously getting quite messy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot of this smaller detail lighter grey work in around this highlight but I want to leave an area right in the middle for a pure white highlight. I don't want it to go too close to the teeth just yet because a lot of them are quite intensely white in the actual picture but I'll drop down a little bit below the teeth and do a little bit of work around the mouth and up through the nose area around the highlights but Again, always maintaining a little bit of pure white in there if I can. What I did there is because I didn't want 
to go too intense through this white area, I actually just pull back. The overspray doesn't worry me, but if I'm too close when I'm doing it, you'll find that it's very hard to get a natural transition through the actual shadow area. You should also see by doing this method a lot of the original white still comes through of the actual picture. It's a little bit darker now on the screen than what I've got in real life so I'll see if I can lighten it up to and zoom it out a bit so but you can see how it's still maintaining a lot of that original white still coming through but all it's done is it's just shaded it down a little bit for us. And don't be afraid if you think you're taking an area too dark because we are going in with a little bit of white next. The reason I'll shoot the light grey before I'll shoot a white over that darker grey just to avoid that little bit of, of blue shift. When you're using more so the greys so it's not really a big problem uh, with the opaques. You'll find that it's a bit more of a problem when you're laying down the transparent black and then you're trying to go over it with white. So if you put down a bit of a light grey first you can reduce the amount of blue shift. And I do believe if uh, you mix the complementary uh, colour to the actual colour that the black is based in, i.e. if it's a red based black or a green base, base black, you actually mix a, I think it's a complementary into it to actually uh, reduce that from happening. Showing up quite bright in the camera there, and unfortunately, it's very hard to pick up the minute little detail that's going on down the bottom in this area. But all I was doing was laying a little bit of light grey through, just in accordance to my reference. This area is going to be a little bit white, so I just wanted to give a little bit of contrast between the whites and the, the darker greys going on there. Again, you can float just a little bit of colouring, but if I do that, you won't see none of this going in at all. So I'm going to avoid doing that just at the moment. You can see if you intensify that light grey too, you can actually start bringing highlights back in. Again, I'm starting to follow some of the ideas presented to me in the reference itself. I will see if I can adjust the brightness there again a little bit. Just so hopefully you can see this light grey going in a little bit clearer. I'll do a little bit around the teeth just to soften them down a bit. All I'm doing is stippling some dots and just doing a little bit of spaghetti action on the back edge of the teeth area itself. Again, just remember that the light's probably coming from this way, so through this area is going to be quite dark later, but this area is going to be a little bit more lit up. 
I think I was working on the teeth there before going to get myself a little bit of a drink. Now what I believe I was doing was just working a little bit on this back edge. Before I go into the, the foreground teeth there, I will do a little bit more work on those background teeth at the back. You might have noted on the top teeth there, I was mainly work my shadows up in the top areas and towards the back of the tooth. In the bottom teeth, I was mainly working in the bottom area towards the gum and again towards the back of the tooth. Always just leaving the tips just a little bit more pure white. But what I will do now, instead of being nice and close, is I'll soften from a distance so that I have a slightly different focus and it'll just appear that it's just dulled that grey, uh, that white down a little bit. And then I'll reintroduce white back into it later. If I really wanted to, I could literally draw a line straight across those teeth and still be able to fix it all. Uh, the white coming in later and then a little bit more light grey and then a little bit more charcoal and a little bit a bit of black. You can pretty much fix any, any little error that, that you can come up with. I'm just going to move it up into the eyes because it might be, again, a, a good area to show a bit of this contrast. What I'm going to do is, where it's a little bit lighter, is I'm going to start quite intense. And as it starts working into here, I want to start working around the colour a little bit so I'm not blocking out too much of the dark darkness of that grey coming through. Hopefully you can just see the subtle change that that's making. You may not pick up the, the actual texture in there as much as I can, obviously sitting in front of it, but it should certainly be giving you the idea if you're actually trying this project yourself. I certainly don't suggest you sitting here watching it. Uh, actually try it. Whilst I'm over here and the camera can see it, I'll do a little bit of this area. Where I do start getting into white areas, I will just bring the, the brush out because again all I want is just basically a little bit of overspray in there. But I can really interweave and, and come into this uh, texture a fair bit more now if I want to. Don't be lazy like me. Because with that spaghetti stroke you're leaving the gun on for quite a long time, 
you will find that you're constantly cleaning your gun when you stop because if you don't you'll definitely get a, a fair bit of a burst coming out I'm actually only really following my reference quite loosely at the moment. I haven't even got it up on the screen to really look at it. Again, I'm just working into my dark shadow, so I really know what I'm doing for this layer. Unless I really want to remember where a highlight is or protect a highlight or something like that, and I'm not sure exactly where it goes, uh, then I normally I won't bother looking at the reference too much until the later layers when I'm cleaning everything up. move it up there a little bit on the camera. This will be a bit of a bit more of an interesting spot I think for you to watch because there is a fair bit of light going on there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to break it up a lot with this light grey and I'm going to use again a bit of an exaggerated action similar to what I did on the, the back of the skull uh, earlier on with the darker grey and we'll see what it comes up looking like. So you can see by actually going in and out and also pulsing the trigger every now and then, mixing it up a little bit between the stippling and the spaghetti method, you get a, an area of non-uniform dots. Earlier on up the top there I was talking about what we want to avoid in the sense of getting perfect sized dots all the way through the painting itself. We want to make sure there's a good mix of them. Again, remember, the closer to the camera you are, the more dots you're going to see. Also in an area where there's a lot of highlight, you may see the dots a little bit more individually as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm now going to blend some of these elements in and just follow some of the actual original shading there in the reference. I want to knock this dark, a little bit of darkness down in the in the center. All right, remember normally what I'd be doing is fogging a lot of this down as I go. I did a little bit of fogging up the top there, just because it was starting to really stand out in real life. On the camera it's, it's starting to look, I think, pretty nice. It's uh, getting a little bit of a, a bony kind of uh, texture going on. It's also maybe looking even a little bit of a stone type texture. So that's another application that this exact type of method could be used on. I'm going to come through here and break up the white a little bit. Hopefully th see through there that I really jumped with the airbrush. I certainly didn't want the same kind of texture going on here that I have here because obviously then I'm going to start lo using, losing a lot of my white. So I moved through the section a lot faster. Same kind of action but you see it just, all it does is it just starts bringing in some light grey features but because you're moving so quick it hasn't really got time to build the paint up. You 
again the idea is just to start breaking up some of these highlights with a little bit of grey going through them now that grey will as I said help give the white something to contrast against if I leave too much of it white and I try to put white back in it you'll find that it's very hard to get the same kind of effect going on so a lot of these highlighted areas now I'm just going to knock back a little bit with a little bit of lighter stippling a little bit in the camera so we can see everything going on there You can see I'm just moving through the painting pretty quickly now. Again, I'm just randomising a little bit of that light grey all the way through, some of the really white and some of the really dark. I won't lose any of my features. All it does, as I said, is help you give something to go around later with the darker colours again or the, the lighter colours again. As I didn't want to do a, a three hour demonstration on this skull, I said I'm not going to be too careful with it. I do suggest if you're given the method to try, take your time with it, play around with it a little bit and see the different effects that you can actually achieve with it. And again, don't be afraid to fog it down because what you're seeing kind of going on there in the screen compared to what I'm seeing in real life, I'm seeing a lot more dots coming through the painting than I think what you'll be able to see there. But hopefully you can see from a bit of a distance it's starting to give a, a real nice texture effect going on. I'm going to do a little bit of work on the, the background and such whilst I've got a little bit of light grey there and then what I'm going to do just for the sake of doing it because you see me do it on a lot of the other videos is I'm going to fog back the whole picture and the reason I do that as I said if you do it from a fair bit of a distance all it does is it just tonal changes some of your colour it starts blending all into a nice nice actual tone and a lot of this earlier work unless you really want it to it knocks it back a bit so it won't show through too much I'm going to work some more lines in with this light grey I'm going to probably go a little bit more detail with the light grey than what I did the dark grey again just maybe avoiding some of the lines and just bringing in some new lines and just building it up all I'm really going to do with the wood is just build up probably three or four layers with it and hopefully just end up with a half reasonable effect at the end So you can see probably even from from that kind of standpoint, just starting to introduce a little bit of light grey, leaving a bit of white coming through. It's starting to create the effect that, that I was desiring. If you started tinting this with some browns and some blacks and some wood tones later on, you'd find that would come through as your grain and then you'd have a nice wood grain effect.
Right, I'm going to fill in this area here. Grey, so it just gives it a nice, nice separation between the, the foreground and the background. Again, guys, I've been pretty rough here, so certainly if I was doing this as a non demonstration and an actual commission piece, I'd be spending a lot more time with some of these effects and details and actually try to do it with a clean brush that works. But what I want to do is now, I'm just going to do a little bit of stippling. You can see I've got a bit of a gritty action going on here, so similar to our target practices, I'm just going to put some lighter grey in those squares. Alright, so I pretty much just blasted some dots into the background just to break it up a little bit. And now, as I was saying earlier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fog over the whole picture. Again, I'm not going to go too crazy with backgrounds or anything like that. Although that in itself, just doing those diamond shapes and putting a bit of a spot in the middle of it with a lighter colour, it's, it's giving it a nice little bit of texture to itself. Although you heard the airbrush blasting away there, I was doing it from around about 10 centimeters away, you won't see any actual change in front of you on the camera, no doubt. Although, if you're real careful, you might have just seen how I was softly blending a lot of that stuff together. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my pure white back out. I want to really re-establish some of my highlights. Now again, as I was saying to you earlier, you could go in with your black now and then do your, your white highlights right at the end. I prefer to put the white on first before the black. Uh, the reason is because if I want to soften any of that white and then reintroduce white highlights again, I can. Doing it the other way around, I find that the it's probably just as easy to, to do it that way, but... I find it's very hard to actually get the same effect without the white potentially overspraying the black and the white overspraying the black in comparison to black overspraying white I feel just it looks a little bit dirtier so I'll leave that kind of a choice to you it's your portrait and it's your picture and it's basically the way you want to paint it I'm just trying to show you a bit of an alternative here um, maybe hopefully a method uh, when matched with other methods and, and used in combination with other methods might help you create your own style and help you formulate ideas on various different applications this uh, type of texturing could be used in. Hopefully this white layer is where you see a, a fair bit of action going on because white obviously gives you a really nice contrast especially when you're going over some darker greys. I'll see if I can adjust everything so it does show up nicely. Uh, that's sh probably a little bit darker than what I've got in front of me here. That's uh, about where it is. Alright, so what I want to do, again, I want to start looking at my highlights in the actual reference. I'm going to put a lot of white back into this. It's not something you'll do for all pictures. Um, most pictures you'll find just highlighting would be sufficient enough. But because the skull is predominantly white and I have introduced a lot of this texturing underneath, you'll find what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a lot heavier with the white than what I normally would, as I said, in a lot of other pictures. But first I'm going to establish all my highlights again, which are the really main intense white areas. Anything that I might have lost a little bit, I'm going to work, especially above the teeth here, I've lost a little bit of the, the lightness that I want. 
I'm going to work back into that with a white and really start bringing it back. Start in the center of it and then start working it out and then stop as per your reference. Still got a little bit of light grey come through, better give the needle a quick clean. You can see how a lot of that earlier texture is quite easy to cover up now without any major shift in the, the colour. But don't cover it all. Again, keep that same stippling action going and you'll find because it's white, a lot of the overspray will just tint a lot of that grey area anyway for you. But when you are going into a shadow, remember to pull away a little bit because we don't want it too focused. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you. I hate spraying white. I might have to thin this down just a fraction. This one can be done in high definition if it's not too long. Otherwise you'll be downloading a 20 gig file and I'm sure most people don't want to be doing that. So I'll just keep working a little bit of this white into these darker areas but again don't forget not to lose them completely. Massive loss of light there. Big clouds gone over the sun, I believe. One thing I do got to get better control of is the lighting that I've got available to me. I'm going to pan across just a little bit so I can show you a little bit more, hopefully, on this contrasted area here. Remember, as I'm going into the shadow, I am actually pulling away a little bit with the airbrush because all I want to do is tint 
I don't want to actually create a definite stroke. I'll just get my reference up here so I can see what I'm actually doing. Don't forget you've got pure white out, so this is the point you also want to re-establish some of these really intense highlights. So in this area here you can see it's quite grey, but in the reference this whole area is actually quite white. I'm going to cut all this grey back until the point it's almost white, but again I just want a, a little bit of this grey peeking through. Don't be afraid to nearly take it back to a white mass. As long as you've still got a little bit of those earlier layers shining through, you can still kind of tell where everything is in the reference, and if you do need to you can go back in with light greys, dark greys, blacks and all that again anyway. This is also the point you want to start introducing any lines or anything like that that you can actually see in the reference. Again, I won't go too crazy. You could really, really have a look at this reference quite closely and and do probably seven to eight hours worth of work, similar to what I did on the, the Portrait Master series, Humphrey Bogart one, just to, to really get the right effect. Sorry, I just realised that you couldn't see what I was doing there. So I'll come from the camera again. Just doing a little bit of work around the eyes and the forehead at the moment, so I will zoom out a bit. Again, what I want to do, especially in the forehead here, is break up a lot of these individual stylized dots. You will see on the reference, the actual forehead is quite light. There's a little bit of a shadow coming through here, but a lot of this area is picking up a lot of light. But I still want to maintain this shadow through here and the shadows above the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trail this light area out and then start working into it. So I start close and then I'm going to lift away. The beauty of laying the white down in this stage is you'll find that it might take a couple of hits of doing this with your white to really get the intensity that you want in some of your highlighted features. But just keep building it up and building it up and you'll find that even some of the earlier white will come through because what that's done is tinted it to a little bit of a grey shade, not pure white in itself. Once I put white back over the top of the white, like I will along this edge here in a sec, hopefully you'll see it really pop out. So what we really want to do is start building up all our whites back to about that value.
Again, all subtle changes maybe in the camera, but quite dramatic in real life. It's starting to look pretty good. I will. I did a lot of earlier work here. I will revisit that now with a little bit more intense white going back over the top, just to bring a bit more of that white out. You can see it's a very messy method. It's a method that you can be quite relaxed with, but it's also a method I think that's pretty good for a lot of beginners because, again, you can be very messy with it. I believe when it comes to airbrush and learn how to make a mess, but learn the technique well behind making a mess, and then you can always slow yourself down, refine yourself, get it perfect, get it nice and tight. Until you actually learn the technique, there's no point trying to create realism. You'll never be able to do it. You will wonder why it's control, but it's not only control, it's technique as well. If you don't know the foundation behind the technique, you're going to struggle actually trying to replicate it onto a, onto a nice fancy portrait. Learn the basics, learn the techniques behind uh, making a, <laughs> a fancy looking mess, and then go on to tightening it up, go on to actually creating different uh, types of uh, realism with it go minimalistic with it, go heavy with it, and try all different variations and see what actually works works well for yourself. One of the good things about putting white in now is I can actually start creating shape in those shadows too if I want. I'm sure you're definitely seeing a bit of that contrast being picked up in some of that work that I was doing up the top there. I'm going to keep going. Again, do a layer and then start again from your light side and work out about halfway and then do it again if you really want to intensify where your actual light source is coming from. Don't try to hit your light sources all in one hit. Layer it all out reasonably lightly first and then you can come back in and intensify anything that you think really needs intensified with lines or other types of strokes. Even along here, you can see now I'm losing lines, but I can still just see my grey lead lines, so it's no drama. When I go to put my black in later, I can clean up all these lines. You might have been able to see there, again, my gun locked on, created a big dot, but again, as I said earlier on up the top there, just stifle it away, create a feature out of it. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit on the, well, actually I might drop the camera down rather than zoom out. So I can do a little bit of work on this uh, chin area. Again, it is quite intense here, but we'll work our way all the way through it, similar to what we did up the top here. And then what I can do is start introducing a little bit of definite highlights going on in there. If you have a definite highlight and you're afraid to lose it, something like this. Don't be afraid just to blast a little bit of white paint into it.
you will find if you left your highlights correctly earlier on you will find that uh, when you actually go to put this white paint on you don't actually have to put a lot of paint on the highlighted area itself to really bring it out again that's one reason that I do like to leave my highlights quite early because it's easy to see where they are again I really, you probably noticed through the video, have used a lot more of the spaghetti stroke than I do stippling. Again, a lot of that has to do with the way my gun's spraying at the moment. And it seems happy to lock on, so I'm happy to let it lock on and just keep going with that stroke and keep going with the movement. Again, if your air gun's running a little bit crappy, just find the best solution for it and keep spraying. That's what I do anyway. I'm going to work a lot more white back into the teeth, again just to start catching it up with a little bit of the white that's gone into the rest of the picture. And I'm now kind of doing the opposite to what I did with the lighter grey earlier on. Again, had to have a little bit of a break there, so I think I was working around the teeth area. And if I remember correctly, I was just saying that what you want to do is you want to shade the front edge of those teeth in comparison to what we are doing earlier with the light grey, which was more the back edge. zoom in a little bit there so you can see some of the effects coming up And I will put a little bit just on the back taper as well. And a little bit of work in underneath the jawline there where the shadow's looking a little bit dark. So you also put a bit more of an intense area through there. This highlight actually comes down a little bit more. And this is where it really starts making it easy to adjust it to the actual reference itself. Even though my line didn't indicate that on my actual picture, the actual reference did and I could work that area off quite easily. Again, what I'm going to do is along some of these top ridges is intensify the white.
I believe I was working in around here somewhere so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this up it does actually get quite bright in here and this needs to be reshaped a little bit so what I'm going to do is as I come in with my white I'm actually going to recreate that little bit of a shadow and actually start cutting in a little bit more of a definite line there same kind of features are going on in the, the back of the skull there so I'll reshape them a little bit I still can see my guidelines there for it so all I'm really going to do is follow my guidelines and create a little bit more of a lighter band coming up through here just to separate this shadow a little bit Anywhere you have put a little bit of light grey on this darker grey from earlier and it is standing out a little bit too much like you can probably see a bit of an area here and you can probably see a bit of a bad transitional area through here where the white separates itself a little bit from the grey. All I'm going to do is just introduce a little bit of a triangle shape up into here and float a little bit of the spaghetti action from a little bit of a distance just to knock it down a bit and same thing in, along here but I am going to pick out a little bit of an edge there because I can actually see just a little bit of an edge from where the jawline is coming around in the in the bit bottom of the picture there and I also got to reintroduce a little bit of white coming back in through here where you can actually see through the drawer itself because earlier on when I did colour that in I've obviously made a little mistake there from what I can see in the reference now and I just need to recreate this white area That's giving it a little bit of a nicer shape going up through there anyway. One of the risks of doing texture is doing a little bit too much. That's one thing that's quite common when you do a lot of texture is that you do get a bit of a, a heavy build up and you, you get a little bit of fogginess to it. That's not a really drama for what I want because again later when I put the blacks in and soften all that down it will blend all that together so it's not something I'll, I'll worry about too much but I will start actually defining some of this lighter shade in up through the bottom of the jaw just to match this as well. Not too far away from pretty much I think where I'll leave the white. You could, as I said, go over this for hours upon hours upon hours, certainly like I did with the other picture of the Humphrey Bogart. And also, obviously what I'll do for a lot more of the, the serious demonstration pieces. 
but for this one I think I'm starting to get a bit of the idea hopefully across of what I'm trying to show with the stippling and the spaghetti method it does look obviously very messy there I'm not going to put any white into the background as per as per se there's already a, a lot of white still coming through from the canvas but I'm going to just chuck a little bit quickly into the wood grain again not concentrating on it too much guys so please don't take this as uh, the exact way that I'll do it as I said if I was doing a, a commission looking at this it really I think hopefully starts showing the technique that I'm trying to demonstrate which is exactly the the reason for the actual demonstration there's only one thing that's missing after this white and that's a little bit of contrast which is a, a black layer but I am going to be a lot more minimalistic with the black to what I would normally be on most pictures just so I can wrap it up and get it finished so we can basically see what the demonstration was about You might not see what I actually put in there on the camera. All I did was basically soften this whole area down with a bit of oversprayed white. What it did is it created a, a nice, I think, background feature to, as I said to you before, if you were going to put browns or something like that on. But it also created a nice little background feature for the black that I'm about to put on. I've tried to mention on some of my videos around the site that this actual black layer isn't really needed. I like to do it because of the contrast that it creates. You don't have to. If you wanted to go back in and you're happy with the effect that you're getting, go back in with a, a dark old grey, maybe a little bit darker than that first darker grey that we are using there. Clean up a lot of your white and your overspray and reintroduce a little bit of your lines and you'll come up with what's hopefully looking like a, a pretty good little representation of the skull. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do exact same with black but you do have to be a lot more careful with the black it is a very heavy colour obviously but I'm going to do exactly the same thing but I'm going to do most of it from a distance because you, you have seen it close up and hopefully this will show up pretty quickly because it's only going to be a reasonably quick layer I'll just zoom out a little bit more so just bear in mind that I'm knocking this in pretty quick just to give a bit of contrast more so so you can actually see what I was doing in earlier I will do a little bit of stippling not too much spaghetti stroke because it will be a little bit too intense probably for what I want but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start obviously in the darkest areas of the actual painting itself That is a spaghetti stroke, but it is from quite a fair bit of a distance. And you can see I've started off light because I don't want to cover up all my early work showing through. I'm going to do the same over here, and then I'm going to intensify the black right near the darkest actual shadow or edge of it and this is obviously when you can start using stencils to really cut it in I might even do that with a, a French curve or two rather than using my hand this time you've, you've all seen that a million times so I'll do it with my French curve just to see if I can get things nice and clean for you probably from around about two to three centimeters away I think a lot of beginners make the mistake of actually trying to be too close to the canvas and too worried about their overspray rather than actually thinking of distance and how it can create useful effects. <coughs> I 
So again, I'm not going to intensify things yet until I get some more of these dark areas established in exactly the same fashion that I've done up there. I'm also going to introduce the odd dark line where it needs to be, but I'm going to try to do that carefully and allow the grey to extend into the lighter greys rather than actually outlining it. You might be able to see on the camera there, I am staying just inside my edge, again so I don't lose that white area or put too much black overspray over it, but if you do, go back in again with your white as I was saying earlier, no dramas. I'll zoom on the nose so you can see a little bit clearer what I am doing there. Hopefully that will give us a pretty good view for the rest of the piece until I get into the background. But all I'm doing is also starting to introduce some lines. If you do introduce a line that you think's standing out a little bit, just as I was saying earlier on, if you make a mistake, just stipple away from it. Start at the line and then stipple into this dark area. So we've pretty much knocked back the line nearly completely there. I still want it to show through just a little bit. Don't be afraid of a few lines, especially in shadows. When it's all said and done, it helps create a little bit of an artistic feel to it. Changes it up a little bit from the reference itself, because the way I look at it, if you want a photograph, go take one. We're artists. We want to be painting art. We don't want to just be doing replication all the time. Right, another really dark area around here is the teeth, but the teeth area here will be a little bit lighter than what it is here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a line and then intensify the line as I go through again you may not see the exact effect there but it's just given a light tone to that dark grey and then it's blended into this nice dark natural black looking colour. I'm going to go in and around the teeth a little bit and blend into that line now. Notice how I'm only doing about half the area now. I'm going to do that on all the teeth and then I can soften it down as I come down a little bit. That's the same thing the other way. You'll notice I speed up a fair bit if I want the line a little bit lighter. this black down a little bit, it's not spraying quite not nicely through the gun at the moment. a little bit nicer for me there. You can see these lines here because again there's a lot of light coming in. It's certainly not going to be as dark as, and as vicious as what's going on in these shadow areas. 
speaking of the shadow areas I'm just going to create a little bit more of a feature here and whilst there I'm going to utilize one of my shields here hopefully if I can find a good match Sorry, I can't help myself sometimes. I find stencils and things like that a little bit awkward in comparison to my hand and I just naturally go for what I feel comfortable with. In your shadows, if you can, never make anything a pure black. Always allow a little bit of the, the earlier lay to actually come through. It gives a little bit of feature, it gives a little bit of feel to the painting, and it doesn't take on that solid look uh, that gives it more of a two-dimensional look rather than a three-dimensional look. Again, I'm not going crazy there, I'm just adding a little bit of more black overspray into here just to start breaking up that big grey band. I'll do the same above on the top part of the teeth there. But again, I don't want to lose all this nice feature that I did a little bit earlier on. So it's really going to go right above the top of the teeth. I'll see if I can find... Nah, bugger the stencils. Again, you can see I outline, then I stipple away from it. Again, how intense you want to go with this black is really up to you. Again, just remember, you can't really bugger anything up. If you do, just go back in with a, a lighter grey. Don't go back straight in with a white and try to fix it. Go back in with your lighter greys or a darker grey, and then go back through your, your, your scale backwards, and then build it up again from there. The only thing it'll really create is, as I said earlier, a bit of a fuzziness to your picture.
You can see I missed my line a little bit there. Again, it wasn't a problem because it's actually in the, the shadow itself. I can cover it. Just remember when we were doing our work earlier over there, we were doing it from a little bit of a distance, and the reason we're doing it is because it is further away from the camera, so it is going to be a little bit more out of focus. But I don't want to go crazy with the black in the back. I really just want to create a bit of a contrasting feature. Excuse me. So I'll create a little bit of a line down the back here just to introduce this shadow area up under and through here. But I won't really touch a lot of this. All I'll do is I'll just interspread a little bit of black every now and then through some of where it suggests on the actual reference itself. There's a little bit of a darker shadow there, but that should be kept pretty light. Later on, I'm actually going to go around the actual top of the skull in black as well, and what that will do is create a contrast. Just come down a bit on the camera. Remember, most of airbrushing is just a game of contrast, guys. Once you learn how to play around with your contrast a little bit, you'll you'll find yourself a lot more comfortable with a, a lot of different projects that you tackle. Or again, I jumped around there pretty quickly. All I wanted to do was tint, move on. Although every now and then I just stabbed the picture with the airbrush, not literally, but pushed my airbrush into towards the canvas whilst I was doing one of those dots and just created a, a couple of a little bit more detailed features towards the back of the skull there. I'll fill in this crack while I'm in here because obviously that is a very dark feature. Again, don't be afraid just to wobble your hand as you go through the stroke. That's basically how the crack's been formed. Now what I'm going to do is go around the picture a little bit before I come back and do a little bit more work on the teeth and the eyes themselves and just sort out these back areas and, and these skull areas because they're normally pretty easy and pretty quick to, to throw in.
Once you play around with the strokes often enough, you, you'll be able to just have a quick look at your reference and see where a shadow goes and know whether it just needs tint or whether it actually needs a little bit more definition. If it just needs tint, just pull away a little bit and those areas that we did earlier on to the shadow will start creating a nice natural blend. I'm not going to put too much work into there because that's where I want this little bit of a band of light coming through. But whilst up there, it's about time to pop these eyes out a little bit. So we're going to just do a little bit of outlining. And then from that outlining, as I said, what I'll do is I'll stipple. When I do the outlining, around this area where it's dark, I'm going to afford to be a little bit slow with my airbrush. But around this area, all I want to do is a quick movement so it doesn't really stand out as a really thick line where somewhere might be getting lit up. Same thing on this one, it'll be on the opposite side this time though. Alright, now some heavy shading in there to about the same intensity that we did some of these earlier shadows that I've still got to do a bit more work in. But remember there's a little bit of a highlight in the actual reference in the background so don't cover it all. That area I did bog back a little bit. Same thing on the other side. If you're unsure of your shadow, put a bit of a solid black in first from a bit of a distance and then stipple over the top of it because what again that will do is it will create a little bit of dimension and depth to it. And see how just by doing those earlier bands, what it did is it, uh, it's created another bit of a texturing kind of technique and feature in there. I didn't probably emphasize it enough with the white when I went in before, but you can put lines in, you can put all different types of things to create this texture. It doesn't just have to be a dotting action or a stippling type action. Lines do exactly the same thing and create nice effects for just themselves.
There's a little bit more work around the teeth there. So I didn't realise you couldn't see what I was just doing there. Just a little bit of work on the jaw, you didn't miss much. I do want to just introduce a little bit of a darker colour underneath the jawline again, the area that I cut down with white earlier because it was a little bit too dark. You'll find that cutting it down with white and then putting the black over it will just bring back that detail a little bit and it'll also allow a little bit of that white to come through which will give us a nice effect. But also remember on the bottom of the teeth you've got some highlights also coming down still from these teeth so just be wary where you actually put the black and go around anywhere that you think might be a highlight. Just need to pick a little bit of detail out of there for the teeth. Basically, just reshape them a bit so they match the top teeth a little bit. Just need to do a little bit of more defining through that earlier line that I put in. And just need to do a bit of darkening work through there as well. This is a bit of the advantage of starting off lightly with your black because you can just keep building up your intensity to suit your, your own desires. I'll zoom out a little bit on the camera so hopefully you can see what the overall effect's looking like. 
I'm starting to get a bit of a realistic skull effect. I'll just leave the skull for two seconds and now I'm going to put in some contrast just in the background so you can see how this is going to instantly pop. I could spend again hours upon hours working some of this black in again then reintroducing light greys, dark greys, you know, through the whole sequence yet again. I can say that a million times but on this painting we won't be doing that. I'm not going to go too crazy over here, All right, I just want to go to about that point and then I'm just going to blend that off. But around the back here I can afford to be a little bit darker. Gun still locking in on me. And yes, I've tried everything to stop it. It's interesting how it's actually coming out because half the time I don't even know how half these paintings will come out. Locked on again. So just keep moving the gun. Sometimes it's better not to stop. As long as paint's coming out, you can do something with it. Alright, so all I really wanted to do was just darken down a bit behind the skull on this side. And what I'm also going to do, obviously, is introduce some shadow at the bottom of the skull. I'm not going to touch the table or any of that aspect yet. I want to put my shadow in first because that's going to tell me how dark I can go with my table. Before I lose this, I'm going to re-establish this line in. And normally I'd flip the canvas on the side, so I'll try to do it with my French curve. Well, my guys, some of the positions I have to get myself in just so the camera can actually see it. <laughs> Certainly not the ideal painting position, believe me. A little bit on the front. I'll re-establish this draw a bit. I 
exactly the same what I did before. I'm putting in short little stabbing strokes or dagger strokes, whatever you like to call them, just to give a bit of the idea of an impression of wood in underneath there. If I went in again with a really solid shadow, it would just look two dimensional rather than three dimensional. Whilst I'm doing some work on the background, I was going to see if I could find what I generally use for my straight stencil. Alright, that's been difficult for me. Alright, see if I can find a piece of paper. Okay, one. Right, I'm just going to use a piece of paper here just to cut this line in a bit. And it's certainly not as intense on that side. Don't be afraid to add a little bit of extra black in there, just do it from a bit of a distance. You can see probably what I did there. Again, it's just a contrast aspect that I'd do that for. Now I'm just going to start pulling out some details down in this bottom area here. I'm also going to shade a little bit of the bottom area and continue this skull shading coming through a little bit, but I'll just put a little bit of the actual detail work in first. And then really all I want to do is just maybe reintroduce a little bit of this shadow coming up from the actual uh, teeth line themselves. And then I'm just going to softly float some larger stippling in from a bit more of a distance, blend it all together and consider this picture done. Hopefully you can see because I didn't go too dark with my shadow and just make a big black mess, I can now put detail into it. Come down a little bit on the camera because you missed that last night and it came up looking pretty cool. So we could spend a lot of time on all these different variations that we're doing. I would like to maybe have a bit of a look, closer look later at wood texture and, and show you some tricks to how I would achieve that. This is the basic process except for your colour.
I'm not sure if you picked up there, but as I was moving into the background, I was actually lifting a, away from the canvas again. The reason being because obviously the wood in the background wouldn't be as in focus as the wood in the foreground there. So when I am working in really close foreground areas, obviously you're pretty close to the canvas. Good paint build up there. The last thing I'm going to do, if I can put them in quickly, is just put some basic screw heads in. Mm, not elongated enough for my liking. Can hopefully you can see there I'm being really messy. I'm just wanting to give the idea and the impression. Again, it's not always about photorealism, sometimes it's about just tricking the eye. Murphy's Law states that it will always happen towards the end of the painting, but I'm going to zoom in and just show you something quickly. A bit hard to see unless I do zoom in, but I had a little bit of a blast. And it always, always seems to happen towards the end of the painting. Again, this is not a drama. If you have a problem like this, because you've done so much stippling and so much textural work and so much detail, it's very easy to cover up. If anything, we can actually use it to our advantage. I could, if I wanted to, take the, the nozzle off and actually spray a lot of those little dots over it as a bit of a final feature. But I won't. Not for this one. So there's most of that problem gone. Again, if you're worried about it, you could go back in with light greys, cover it up, and then reintroduce all your colours again. But for what I'm demonstrating here, no real dramas. I'm going to back it off again a little bit, just so I can get the final aspects of this picture finished, hopefully, without any more little mistakes. A little bit of dark work just in the bottom of the jaw here. Those earlier lines that I was talking about. And then just that general stippling. Oh, my guns love me again. Definitely be cleaning it out after this painting, I think.
Again guys we could work this for hours upon hours upon hours. I'll soon call it finished. Hopefully. Now yeah, what I'm doing is trying to bring in and match some of these original shadows in the actual reference. They don't have to be spot on, as I say, in all the way through the painting. Make it a little bit unique, make it a little bit your own, change the shadows around, change the light sources around. And realistically, how dark you take it is really up to your your imagination and your choice. What you're seeing here is actually a lot lighter to what I'm seeing in real life. So I'm not going to go too much more crazy. I just want to bring some of this, uh, I suppose you could call it shadow just above the teeth there, just up into those a little bit more with a little bit of stippling. help define them a little bit. There's a few little edges I could cut in as well. I'm going to spray over this line a little bit just from a bit more of a distance, just follow the line. It's just going to give it a little bit of a shadow, more so towards the bottom of the line if you can. And due to perspective, I'm going to make this area thicker than obviously this and this. A few more little dark areas splotched in here. One thing this is really crying out for is a little bit of outlining on this dark back edge and then really intensifying this black here a little bit if I can, just to suit the shadow and the eyes and get it to the same intensity.
Alright. Mm, pretty happy with that. Maybe a little bit just darker shadow through down this bottom here. thing I do want to do is I want to knock back the white a little bit on the teeth just to help blend it in a little bit. I'm going to do exactly what I did with the, the lighter greys earlier on. bit more intense fine, not so much intense fine, I should say more fogging off some of these heavily textured sections. Right now what I'm doing is I'm blowing and encouraging overspray into some of these whiter areas and the lighter grey areas because what that will do is it actually blend it all together. circle from a distance around the actual eye itself. Again, all that I'm trying to do is encourage a little bit of tonal change just to suit the reference a little bit. You can see it hasn't really added a lot of detail or, or actual change to the picture. All it did is tonal change some of those earlier highlights. I'll do the same on the other side here. Maybe just a little bit more shadow on that table. Edge. 
I swear I could go with this painting for about another 20 hours, I reckon. Alright guys, I could probably keep going on this for hours upon hours, as I've said throughout. I could put white back in, reintroduce some of my highlights, blend off a lot more of this stippling effect, but the idea of the stippling effect and to show you in such a dramatic way was the actual effect that it can achieve. Don't be afraid to be a little bit messy with your paintings. As you can see with that one, if you probably zoom in and look a lot closer, it is quite a messy painting. But one thing you've got to learn first is technique. You always will learn control down the track sometime. Control is, is fantastic, but if you don't actually know the technique behind the control, there's no point because you can spend five years trying to master the airbrush with dots and daggers and, and getting them all spot on and perfect. But unless you actually understand the principles of layering, you're always going to struggle with airbrushing. This is what I'm trying to demonstrate. It's all about the actual layers that you lay and the way that you process the actual picture that will create something that still looks reasonably good at the end even if it is a little bit messy. Once you learn that control, you can start refining this messiness down to a nice tight detailed type stroke and you can literally match every little aspect that you will see in that reference. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of a basic idea on how a skull can be achieved. I know there's a lot of videos out there on skulls. I'm hopefully a little bit different in the aspect that it's, it's showing a different method and it's showing the two different methods blended together and it's done it to a really extreme uh, standard hopefully so you can see exactly what this texturing method can do. It's a very messy stroke as I said but you can clean it up. Your last layer, your blacks, is the most important to do that. Everything before that, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I hope you enjoy your painting. I hope you try this technique and, and give it a little bit of a shot. And there's no point trying the technique without, you know, painting with it. So go and get yourself a picture of a skull or, or even a, a portrait that's got heavy, heavy uh, texture in it and have a shot of this actual technique.